So I will make a, a short uh, overview of uh, some of the main uh, outputs from this fast call project. It was a European project. It uh, was concluded. It, was, it started before the pandemic and uh, we crossed the pandemic and we finished last year in December. And uh, uh, it's about fatigue of call form details. That, uh, um, I will uh, introduce uh, in a few seconds. So this is the content of my presentation. I will make a short introduction, then I will jump uh, directly to the results of the project. So I will first uh, uh, make an overview of the fatigue uh, uh, data we derived in project for bolted joints. And afterwards, uh, fatigue behavior of cold form profiles and I will make some conclusions. Regarding the motivation of this project, um, we realized uh, about uh, well ten years ago that, that was the time we started to think in this project that the um, warehouses uh, that use these kind of massive uh, structures are performed by uh, thin section profiles, so-called so cold form profiles, and. Uh, um, in these uh, structures, uh, we understood that uh, there were some problems about fatigue cracking, and there was no, till now, no uh, solution in current uh, European design codes for this kind of profiles. Why? Because European uh, standards for uh, steel structures are mostly uh, derived for thick cold roll sections, not for thin uh, cold form sections. So uh, this. Uh, the uh, gap uh, led us to this project that was uh, approved and funded by the European Research Fund for Coal and Steel. This project, uh, the results I will show today uh, were uh, not exclusively from the University of Porto because we were partners. It was some of those results came from the consortium. Um, and in this project, uh, I will show here just the the final deliverable of the project, but we did a very long journey starting from the manufacturing of the profiles to, till the uh, structural integrity. So we were very concerned about residual stresses from cold roll forming. Uh, so we simulated the, the roll forming process in these very big machines and afterwards we using that history we went to structural application and look for the um, um, fatigue strength for those uh, profiles. So, um, starting from the bolted joints, why stand to stand bolted joints in this project? Why uh, we are wasting time with bolted joints? Uh, maybe is your question right now. Uh, because uh, we, we are talking of thin sections and the manufacturing uh, procedures for building such kind of structures usually doesn't uh, rely on pre-loaded bolted connections, which is typical for us uh, bridges, uh, for example, but this kind of structures, we understood that the usual practice is to uh, work with snag tighted bolts, which is a kind of no controlled uh, torque applied to the bolts, which is a problem. Again, also we are talking of seam sections, so the, even if we use pre-loaded bolts, bolts uh, the effect of preload will not be not so effective because we, uh, when we are going to very thin uh, thicknesses, uh, the um, relaxation of the preload will for sure occur faster. And we are also talking of material with sometimes with zinc coating, uh, which is uh, very uh, prejudicial, very. Uh, detrimental to the friction. Okay? So we did a big um, fatigue testing campaign for bolted joints uh, and also we look for some roll forming sections. So one of them that was 
uh, investigated from the uh, University of Porto was the, this kind of profiles, which are rails, where we have uh, some shuttles uh, moving on the rails, which will uh, produce uh, fluctuating stresses on the rails, in this uh, rail uh, path, uh, flange, uh, and will mean the uh, wearing lead to, oh sorry, uh, this is very tricky, will lead to cracking in the uh, red to uh, flange transition corner. Uh, another group from our consortium uh, was, was um, in charge of doing uh, this kind of uh, uh, fatigue analysis of the upper rights to beam uh, bolted joints. Okay, uh, let's go to the uh, experimental program. Um, so this is an overview of what we did for the bolted joints. We uh, selected the uh, bolted joints with a very simple configuration, as you can see here, just one bolt. Uh, I'm talking of double shear joints. Then we have some uh, joint combination, uh, multi -bolt, multiple bolts. And we looked for also uh, process uh, fabrication for the holes. We, uh, the typical situation is to use punched holes. Then we test the drill uh, uh, possibility, which is slow, uh, so not so interesting for industrial practice, but we decide to look for these effects. We also test different load ratios, uh, selectite bolted joints. In this case, we, we define selectite condition uh, as being 25% of the preload that we use when we are designing preloaded bolted joints. We also apply preloaded conditions. And, uh, uh, well, this is a summary. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, this is uh, a punched hole and this is a drilled hole. Uh, we just ask for industrial practice. And uh, that was we received from industrial partners. For me, it was a huge surprise to see this quality, bad quality when they do the drilling because it's lower process and the quality was uh, worse. Well, regarding the fatigue uh, results, the final goal of this project and the call, the European call I, I talked uh, before, uh, is more oriented for practical results in, in the way they want to um, find projects that could, for example, deliver results that could be uh, useful for improving existing design rules. So, we were looking for the SCN data using the typical approaches using uh, for stress definitions. So, we use here the net stress condition for selectite bolted joints. We use here the remote uh, stress or gross, uh, uh, the stresses in the gross uh, section for preloaded bolted joints. And we um, derived some uh, possible uh, design curves for these two kind of conditions. Um, during this project, we also realized that uh, there was that, that there was a movement in the European standards for the new generation of the European codes, and we uh, uh, realized that the fatigue standards were also uh, changing, and that there are a revision ongoing for the European standards for fatigue. And we realize that our data is very consistent with what is being do, done by the technical committees revising the European standards. I, that means uh, we are now uh, looking for this slope m equal to 5 instead of the traditional m equal to 3. And uh, uh, another thing that uh, I, I have to say is, okay, we are uh, trying to find uh, sometimes it's not easy to, to define what is the nominal stress or the remote stress or the net stress when we are talking of a very complex structure. So we, we uh, in this case, we went to the local definitions for the stresses and in this case we found that if we use the maximum principal stress range uh, in the old vicinity that we may obtained using numerical modeling, we were able to correlate all the data in a very, well, I'd say, acceptable uh, scattered band. Finally, we delivered this kind of tables just uh, in the same format to be included in the raw codes. 
So we are talking of, uh, well, uh, new detailed categories uh, based on slope 5. Uh, it was surprising because when we went to the local peak stresses, we uh, went back to the slope 3, but with this uh, higher uh, fatigue strength category. Okay, uh, regarding the role form profiles. So, uh, we never test such kind of profiles in our lab because we, uh, this is not standard specimens, so we had to develop a testing procedure. So, Vitor uh, is there, that was the guy that developed this testing procedure, in order to uh, model uh, the wheel loads on the uh, rails, on the Z rails. And uh, uh, in this case, we have to define what is the final. Number of cycles to failure. We define that we using this kind of local monitoring for the stresses, and we define it with a <coughs> variation about 10% of the local stresses. Then uh, again, definition of nominal stresses is very uh, complex. We went locally. Uh, we define the principal uh, elastic stress range in these corners using numerical models that were previously calibrated using extreme gauges and we derive these uh, SEM lines for these uh, profiles. Here you can see the, the cracking patterns that we observed uh, in our profiles. So, uh, since full-scale testing is very expensive and uh, uh, time-consuming, uh, well, we decide, okay, let's try to test some slices of our profiles in what we call the small-scale testing, as you can see here. And in this case, we were able to expand our database, our number of testing samples. You can see here different testing samples that came from our real profiles and we make some uh, extra bending just to put in our machine, testing machine, and uh, we put some strain gauges, some locally, others remotely, but by the, by the end of the, this study we went to numerical model, models. In this left corner I can say that uh, if we design or if we uh, take into account the nominal geometry for these profiles, uh, we may have a significant uh, error in the fatigue life estimation. Why? Because the nominal, nominal geometry and the real geometry may vary significantly. And this must be taken into account by each designer, take into account a manufacturer quality, average quality. Otherwise, you will estimate the local stresses um, very um, differently of what we have tested. Okay, going back to the Hessian uh, data, here you can see the, the full scale and small scale test data for the same rail. Okay, for the same rail. Here you can see that we have a very mixed data between full scale and small scale. So this just uh, allow us to understand that small scale uh, is really um, representative of what we have in the full scale specimen. Okay, uh, afterwards we went to a high frequency resonance machine, okay, that was developed in Aachen, in Germany, and we were able to run a very large number of tests and we get this cloud of points. Uh, so, since we want to deliver some uh, design uh, SN line, we uh, achieve that line here uh, as a safety line and consistently with the new revision of the neural codes. Okay, uh, we, uh, in this project, we went further uh, because we also considered the upright. Uh, to beam uh, connections, so this is a kind of, this is a bolted uh, connection and we realize that uh, in this case we will have also local failures uh, around the corner, precisely in the same corners we got in the rails, okay? So our problem is always locally and if we are able to estimate local stresses we will succeed in the fatigue life prediction. So. Uh, again, this is the data from the uprights, just uprights. Uh, in this case, all the data we got from full-scale tests 
So these tests were done in Pisa, University of Pisa, and here we can see that we have tested two different materials. The data is fully mixed, which is good for generalization. And here we also can see different specimen uh, sizes, uh, beam sizes, and materials. Again, all the data is mixed. Finally, uh, we understood, okay, maybe we just need one detailed category for rails and for uprights. Uh, if we get local stresses precisely. So this slide shows that. So we are talking of uh, 231 points. And uh, uh, what we found, okay, let's, let's use local stresses, but be careful about what I told you before, the R over T ratio in the corner. So here we can see that when we, we, we are going to smaller R over T ratios, which is the green points, we are going down, okay? So what we found, or what we uh, understood, is that uh, we may propose to the you know, uh, standards committee that uh, uh, for this kind of uh, thin uh, thicknesses uh, profiles, um, when cracking appears on the corners, uh, due to local bending modes, not due to local <coughs> bending modes, in this case, we must be careful it, because we need a precise model to get local stresses and we also must take into account this parameter, the radius over thickness, uh, which is uh, the most important for the stress concentration in that region. Doing that, we are able to use this uh, SCN line, uh, which is the highest detail category that is now uh, foreseen in the, the European uh, in the Eurocom 3 revision. So, uh, this is the final conclusion, uh, so it was a very short overview of what we've done, what we, what we have done uh, in the, this fast call consortium. Uh, we have done, uh, we have generated, let's say, uh, interesting database of experimental data. It is available for you if you want to play with modeling. We are also doing, doing that uh, in our site. Um, the most important parameter that it is, this was not uh, really our first thought. We, saw, we in the beginning we thought, okay, roughness should be a very important perimeter. It was not the case in our uh, study. And uh, um, be careful about manufacturing quality, and that is a very important message uh, for the designers. We must not uh, design without taking into account any well the quality of manufacturing, or at least we should send that message for manufacturing. Okay, that's it. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much.